This video is a demonstration on how you might conquer making an advertisement by breaking it down into smaller steps, and I'm going to guide you through those steps with an example of an advertisement that I happen to make in the same way that you might make yours. The first thing that I did was look at magazine ads that I was interested in, and I ripped them out of a People magazine. I have an Advil ad here, and I re what I really liked about this was that it was the entire photograph was taking up the whole page. There was text that you can read very clearly over it. There was a small image of the product. There was their logo, little tagline, and that was pretty it. And I really liked the simplicity of it. I thought it was strong. It was straight to the point. I also found um, a pistachio ad, and I actually wanted to take pictures of pistachios, so I thought this was appropriate to look and compare what kind of ads already exist for the product that I was going to be taking pictures of. So their kind of logo is Wonderful Pistachios, the Fit Nut is their tagline, here's their body copy, and it shows some symmetry with the half circles pistachio product, and then this guy here who clearly looks like he's fit. So it matches the topic, and I liked the layout. So then I went and I took pictures of my pistachios. Here are some of the ones that I thought came out really well in the studio. I have pistachios that are grouped together, pistachios that have backlighting. However, to get this effect, I glued them to toothpicks. So um, the toothpicks are a bit of a problem. I have one pistachio alone, and then I have one that I thought was opened, and there was all this negative space that could be a place to put some text. So those were some of my favorite photos. I didn't quite plan out exactly what I was going to do, but I knew that I'm going to use the Advil and the pistachio ad. I also have a picture of the bag. This particular bag I did not have at the time that I took the pictures, and because this is a demo, I'm okay using the internet bag here, but if you're doing this, you would be using your own pictures that you took from the studio because the point is to get a really great picture of the product. That's the number one thing you're doing here. If you can't prove to a future uh, superior boss that, hey, I can do this, then what's the point of doing this if you can't show that you're taking good pictures? So that's something that's important to do. But for this case, just to show you, I did indeed take this off the internet. So I arranged my items, and my final ad ended up looking like this, and I'm going to break down how I got that. So here's my tagline. I made it up, the classic snack. I had actually edited the photo, added this in, put in their kind of logo here, and I thought that it mimicked the simplicity of this Advil ad, but also took in some elements of the pistachio ad, for example, making the nuts a little more on the green side, because when you buy them, they're not really that green. So I enhanced those a little bit. Um, and I tried to match the font a little bit and make sure that it still represented the company the way that it should. So let's start by looking at my files. Here I have opened my pistachio picture that I'm going to use, and I have my pistachio bag that I'm going to use. I want to create the original layout that this is going to go in. Since it's a magazine ad, I'm going to make a new file that is 8.5 by 11 for print. So up here, if I go to print, I'll actually find the letter size, which is 8.5 by 11. They already have the resolution at 300. That's exactly what I want. This is the orientation that I should be using if it is a true magazine ad, and I'll say create. So what I'm going to do is put all the elements that I want on this layout. So first I'm going to take my pistachio picture here. I can say control A for select all, control C for copy. Then I can click on my untitled file here, control V for paste, and control T for scale. So this is where I could turn my file, move it around the way I want, get it inside the space that I'm looking for. I think I end up doing something like this. I hit enter to end the command and then what I ended up doing was cloning this so that it wasn't white and for the clone tool as a reminder is this stamp and I can hold down alt to select an area let go of alt and then fill in I have to repeat alt to continue so that I don't actually fill in more white so I'm gonna go back in hold down alt select let go and I just continue filling this in until the entire thing is filled in. So once I continue to fill in that space, the next step was to make my pistachios greener. So to do that, you already know how to do that when you did your landscape unit. You can change your layer, a new layer, to a color layer. I can choose some sort of green. 
I'm going to grab my paintbrush, and then I also have my um, eyedropper here. I could pick something that's already in the pistachio, maybe that kind of green, but then up here play with it till I get something that I want. I probably want something more like that. And I could use my paintbrush to go ahead and paint it green. Now that is really strong. Your pistachios are not going to look that strong. You can also remember to use a gutter. So if you're afraid that you're going to go over the edge like I did here, you could use your selection tools to select an area. And just like for your montage, you could use your feather tool. I'm going to go to select modify feather. I'm going to give it a number. It's kind of a guessing game. I'll say 10. And now when I go to my paintbrush and paint inside, as you remember, these are my gutters as if I'm bowling. So I'm not going to go outside of them. Then when I hit Control D for deselect, you can see it's a softer edge and it's not as harsh as the one that's over here. I can also then dull this layer. So here's my layer two. This is my green color layer. It says color up here. I can change my opacity down a little bit and make it more of a subtle change. So before, after. I've already previously done that and put that in my um, final version that I have open before, but I will show you then the next step once I open that version. Here is the final edited version of my photo that I will be using. So the next step is now adding text. And text is going to give your product information for the viewer. So we have the T tool on our text toolbar, that is text. When I click on it, if I hold it down, there is other options, but you're most likely gonna use the first one. At the top, there is all of your fonts. There's different sizes and things up here as well. We have narrow, bold, regular. Uh, you also have if it's centered, left aligned, right aligned, your color of your text. I think I'm actually gonna use white. So I just click inside the box, change it to white. You can just click and start typing, or you can even click and hold down and make a box. You're going to see that once you do that, this cursor is flashing so you can start typing. And also it created a new layer that has a T in it, meaning that that is text. So I'm saying that my tagline is the classic snack. And I want every word to be on its own line. I do like the centered look, so I'm going to leave that, but I need this much bigger. So just like you would in any other text uh, program like Microsoft, you could go up here and change your size. If you want something bigger than the 72, I could simply highlight this, type in something, and then there it is. Um, I could also change my font here. I think that Arial is fine. Uh, I don't want narrow, though. I might actually do bold. But now it's too big, so I might have to expand this to reveal it. Maybe I'll do 125. That looks nice. Your arrow tool is your home base, so when I click on that, I could grab it and move it around. I have my snap guides on. Those help me keep everything centered. This is looking pretty good. I can read it, except that it gets a little lost in the lightness over here. So I can work with the layer itself. If I come over here to my layer palette window and double click on the text layer, a box will pop up to give me all these options for that particular layer. So we have a bevel and emboss. When I click on that, the pre-settings are already a little subtle, but it, it changes the edges a little bit. Let's see if I can zoom in for you. So before, after, it's very subtle, but it creates something nice there. There are other things you can play with, inner shadow, uh, gradient. I like drop shadows, so I might check that. And now you can see that that drop shadow has separated the photo from the text. And I can definitely read the text now. It seems like it's a little bit up. There's extra space going on. You could always change what's going on in the shadow if you wanted to change the direction. There's a plus sign. Oh, I should be able to click on that. Oh, shoot, it's not letting me. Oh, there we go. I double click on the word. That There you go. Um, I can change how much I see that shadow. Maybe I want it really strong. Maybe I want it subtle. I'm changing my angle. If you're watching on the left, you can see it. The distance, how much your shadow is. If I like it, I can say OK. So having a drop shadow will really separate that. And that's something that's um, pretty useful in advertisement. You don't want to do it all the time, but it works for this case. Then I also want to add text down at the bottom that says the wonderful snack. So I could do my T tool again, create a box, start 
changing my text size here because that's too big. I could change my color again to more of a green. I could say the wonderful nut because that's their tagline. I might even add a drop shadow to that. So I already previously have that in and I have this done as well. But just so you can see the text tool, that is how it works. Now I've tweaked the text to the way I want to get it, um, and this I'm very happy with how it looks, except for that at the bottom, there's still some um, clarity issues as to what I'm reading. From a distance, it's hard to still pull out, even though I have a drop shadow. But if I change the opacity of my bottom layer, it's going to get whiter because it's going to blend with the background and my text is white. So something I might do is create black around my edges to give it more uh, of a subtle feeling and the photo is going to fade in the distance. And to do that, I can add a new layer right above my picture. I can go to my gradient tool, which is also shared with the paint bucket tool. And at the top, I can click on uh, my gradient and then I can choose my color. So I want black. So I'm going to click in, choose my color. I don't want white over there. I want black still. And this one that has the checkerboard means that it's going to fade from black into nothingness. So it's going to reveal underneath. And the gradient tool is really fun to play with. You can use that with filters as well. So I'm actually just going to click at the bottom and drag up and then let go. And now I've gotten some black at the bottom. I can do that at the top too to have some sort of symmetry like the pistachio ad that I was inspired from. And so now the top and bottom are black. And if that's too strong... I could then change the opacity of that to get something that I like. So this is more of a subtle way to separate the word pistachios from the background without adding too much distraction. It's just enough to get something I like. So once I tweak that, the last step is adding in my pistachio back. So I'm just going to use any selection tool that I think works. In this case, it might be my magnetic lasso tool because there's some really high contrast here, and that works really well. I don't think I need any feathering, so I'm just going to do Control C. Um, oh, that's my final one. I'm going to do Control V. I'm going to drag my layer up to the top so that it's on top of everything. Control T to change my size, maybe the orientation a little bit. Put it over here. I can even add a drop shadow to that if I'd like to. So I'm going to pick one of those. I think I like that. And then there's my final add. So those are all the steps that I used for me, but you want to remember that you're going to have some original photographs, you're going to have some sort of text, whether it's a tagline, the actual name of the product, or a body copy, or something to advertise, and you want to remember who your audience is. So my tagline is the classic snack. So I tried to make the photograph a little classy, a little formal. We do have this off-center to imply that it is still fun, even though it's classic, and then just to know that it is this company down here and I thought that it did match the company's philosophy really well. Um, and if you do all of those things, then you'll have a successful ad. When you're all done and you've decided that you have something that you like, the last step is to save your ad as a JPEG so that it can be readable in Google. So I'm going to say File Save As. This is where I'm going to change this to the first JPEG option. I could give it a name. I might call this final pistachio add two because I've already previously made one. Save. I like the maximum quality, but anything eight or higher is pretty good. I'm going to say OK. And now it's been saved as a JPEG. And the JPEG is what I'm going to upload to Google. You can tell what a JPEG is because if you look at the file, a Photoshop file, not only under the file type does it say Adobe Photoshop, it also has a little icon with the blue and the PS there, so you know it's not going to upload properly. If it's a JPEG, it'll say JPG file, so you know that those are going to be able to be read outside of the Photoshop program. Thank you.